And, and we were here, Tony and Roxia, when it did happen. In fact, we're still waiting to hear from the owner of Tinhorn Flats. We reached out to him this morning to see what will be his next move. We have yet to hear from him. But this is what it looks like this morning. In fact, this was a restaurant that was open late last night. And then when we came here this morning, we watched as... The doors were padlocked by the city of Burbank. In fact, we have some pictures of that. This was done when it was still dark this morning under the watchful eye of police officers. It was just yesterday that a judge ruled that the city could padlock these doors for its repeated defiance of public health orders. The owner had gotten word of this, so he changed the doors so that there would be no knobs or handles to padlock, but the city then used latches. This is on top of what happened over the weekend. Burbank officials cut power to the restaurant. The owner brought in generators and continued to serve beer and burgers. They used a barbecue. Despite the county's move into the red tier that allows for limited indoor dining, the county public health department and the Burbank City Council had previously revoked its permits because of its defiance. And now another hearing is scheduled for March the 26th on whether a temporary restraining order should be extended against this restaurant and whether the owners should have to pay $1,500 in fines. So this tit for tat, this escalation continues. The city believes essentially that this restaurant should be punished for what they believe were past transgressions, saying this, quote, allowing this to go unchecked could embolden other restaurants and facilities to flout the same permit requirements, which would further undermine public health and safety. They said other restaurants had sacrificed and suffered for complying. So again, we'll see how the owner responds, Tony Aroxia. There was a Facebook post last night from this owner, and he said, let me be very clear. I will never pay fines for illegal mandates and closures. I am now declaring Tin Hor Flats, an autonomous zone, and he said in capital letters, we are open for business. They have been open every day about the noontime, again, in defiance uh, against the city, and we will see what will happen uh, when, they planned, when they had planned to open this noon. So All what right. about, like, the customer base and the neighborhood there? Are people supportive? Uh, I mean, is the place packed when they're open? I, I think it's torn and you have people. This has been basically a symbol for the defiance against public health orders. There's a sign in the front door that says it's a peaceful protest. Essentially, they're saying it has been their constitutional right, Second Amendment right to protest, a uh, First Amendment right to protest, rather, and stay open. And it's not just the customers in this neighborhood. People across the country and certainly through the Western United States have looked at this as uh, a, a, a place that they support. So if you look on social media, there is money uh, being donated to this restaurant, not just from people in the city and the state, but from all across the country for them to be able to stay open. In fact, it was those people's idea to get the barbecue, to change the doors. So they're helping them out through this process. And I know that people have traveled from near and far to that restaurant simply to so, show their support. All right, uh, Bobby D., thanks so much. Appreciate the report. We'll see what happens.